What's up YouTube? Today I'm hitting a pull workout. I'm right now nine weeks out from my pro qualifier. Energy's a little bit down, but the most important thing here is the mentality. And that is what I want to convey most to you guys in this video, I'm hitting a pull workout. I'll show you guys some stuff in terms of exercise and how to build your back and biceps and all that good stuff. But the most important thing I want you to walk away from when you watch to the end of this video is the mindset it takes and what the gym is supposed to provide you for the rest of your life. So without further delay, because my energy's low, we're just gonna get right into this workout and get moving. Let's do it. First movement we're gonna start with here is a single arm lat pull down. So I'm gonna get into this and uh, just start ripping it. I'm, I'm gonna try to just power through this workout because like I said, I'm a little bit dead and uh, I can't rely on caffeine, unfortunately. I don't really handle it that well as much anymore. I only have one serving a day. I already had it this morning for cardio. So we just gotta use the mental strength and tenacity to power through this workout. So let's get into it. So the way I like to set this up is the side you're pulling on. I put this leg through like this and I'm just gonna pull straight down like that. This is a warm up set, but I'm just trying to get the feel of the movement. <sighs> Feels pretty good on this. A real set. So mentality for this, when you get in these, these top sets, these real sets, you have to lock in and you need to be thinking about what you're gonna do here. Everything else in the rest of your life does not matter. This set's the only thing that matters right now. For the next 30 seconds, I'm doing it. I found that failure point right there. Ooh, we're in it now. Once you get that first real set going, the blood's pumping. So you guys will notice, for a lot of these movements, I am gonna use these wrist straps, okay? Wrist straps, whatever, everybody calls them different things. Wrist straps, because I care about gripping the weight. I don't care about my forearm strength training. This is not powerlifting. I'm a bodybuilder. Most important thing is targeting that muscle. For this movement, that lower lat can really feel when I'm driving into that. And, you know, like I said before that set started, mentality is everything, right? I was just telling Jason, the camera guy, who's filming me, um, that I'm on the back end of a bunch of low days of food in a row. But I have to mentally approach this as if that doesn't matter. I could be eating protein and veggies only for a week straight. I still have to train my ass off because if you don't do that and you don't train hard, you will end up getting really stringy and look really stringy when you're lean, whether it's on stage or on the beach or whatever. So all that hard work you put into building muscle when you're bulking, you need to work twice as hard to maintain that in the gym, okay? So just think about it like that. Whether you're cutting, bulking, whatever, training is the number one thing. It's more important than PEDs. It's more important than supplements you take. If you don't train hard, you're not gonna build muscle. You're not gonna build muscle, just plain and simple. So let's get this last top set. I'm gonna stick with the same weight for this one. hit failure around 11 or 12. Let's see if we can match that. Let's go. reps there. It's all right. Muscles do not know how many reps you're doing. They only know the failure point. 
They need to be taxed. And that is what we're doing. All right, done with the first movement. Whew. Chest supported row. This is gonna be basically very similar to a T-bar row, except your chest is supported. So I'm gonna show you guys on this warm up set. You're gonna to try to keep your chest glued to this, okay? A lot of people have a tendency to come up like this when they're doing this. You don't wanna do that. Trying to keep your chest glued to this as much as you can, right? So watch my, where my chest stays. Pull, let that stretch at the bottom, come back up, just like that. That's light, a little light work. And the most important thing, guys, on warm up sets, do not tax yourself, okay? They are just to get the blood flowing, get your muscle and mind connection primed for that movement. Make sure you conserve your energies for the top sets. You know, a lot of people like to train three or four sets per exercise. I think that's ridiculous. I think you need one to two really good top sets per exercise where you're just busting, busting yourself out as hard as you can, right? You don't need more than that. So because I'm high on fatigue, I'm gonna just go for typically one warm up set per exercise. All right. Yeah, that's it. Ooh. Oh, Woo. that endurance fades fast, man, when you're fatigued like this. But like I said, it doesn't matter, high food, low food, the training mentality is still the same. You have to take yourself to failure. That failure point might change as you get leaner. If you're cutting, that's okay, it doesn't matter. Remember when I said, your, your muscles don't know anything about the amount of reps or weight you're lifting. All it knows is the taxing amount you're putting on that. So typically for reps, you can do anywhere from six to 30 reps, and that's gonna have good hypertrophy outcomes for you, but What's most important is you train as close as you can to failure. That's the most important thing. I'm trying to match that 10 reps from last set to the best of our ability. And it's important to remember no matter what you're doing and who you are when you're training, if you accept less than your best here, I can guarantee you that the rest of your life will be like that too. So you have to set the tone for your life in the gym here. Let's go. done with this. Woo. Making our way guys, making our way. So I was just about to tell you guys what I have in my intro workout and I totally forgot to put my creatine in here. So it's a good time to talk about it. So in here I have 30 grams of carbs. Now you're going to tell, you're going to see a lot of different companies tell you, oh, you have to use this carb powder and all this different stuff. Carbs are carbs guys. You can use Gatorade powder. That's super cheap. I personally have Carbolin in here. Uh, it's a strawberry flavor, and I was telling Jason, I mixed in uh, a strawberry banana prime, some electrolytes in there, and then I do 10 cranks of sea salt. I love a hot gym. A lot of people are like, oh, I like it to be AC. Hell no. I'm going to have to edit that out. Oh, 
Now one more. Come on. Ooh. Oh, man. That's good. Pain is a good thing. There's a sign over there. It says, we'll have to edit it in somewhere. One day this pain will make sense. And let me tell you guys, when you're building your physique, it's gonna be very painful at times. It's gonna feel extremely hard, whether you're going through periods of eating a lot of food when you're bulking, when you're building your physique, or you're suffering through a lot of hunger, fatigue when you're cutting. You don't have to be a competitor. It's not about, I don't compete because, you know, I compete because I love bodybuilding, yes, but I compete more than anything because I love what it does for me mentally and how it's changed my life. There's a lot of sacrifices you have to make with bodybuilding, so I'm not saying it's all sunshine and rainbows. In fact, it's not, and that's, that's what I love about it is because it's given me such a leg up in life because I know how to suffer, I know how to enact discipline, enact discipline, excuse me, and that's what's most important. That's why I tell all my clients, this should be a breeding ground for the rest of your life. This should not be your whole life, it should be a breeding ground for the rest of your life. Let's do it. Eight. That's it. So Jason and I were just talking about this. I, this morning I got up, I did fasted cardio. As I was telling you guys, I, I'm on the end of these low days. I have such little energy to the point where I came home from doing that cardio in the morning and I'm working on a passion project, writing something right now that I'm not gonna talk about right now. But I sat down to start doing it and I'm like, I have no creative juice. So I just got done what I needed to do before I came to do this workout. But the thing is guys, there's always people that are that are pushing harder than you, right? Like we were just talking about, I was telling him about this dude Cameron Haynes, he's a bow hunter. I'm reading his book right now, his audio book called Endure right now. And I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he ran something like a marathon every day for some long stretch of time, or like so many marathons a week or something ridiculous. Like when you reframe what other people are able to do, your whole perception on what you're capable of will change, trust me. So many of us give like 30% of our potential and we're like, oh, this is, you know, this is the most I can do. It's like, no, and that's even true with me. It's like, when I'm getting the end of these sets and I think I'm done, I'm thinking like, I'm not done. There's more I can go. So when you see me end the set, that's muscle failure. But mental failure comes a lot, lot more, a lot sooner after or before muscle failure does. So let's get this last top set in here. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Done with that. Crush that. So if you guys want to follow along, I'm tracking all my lifts in my phone on this app called Rep Count. I have literally no affiliation with them at all. But what's good is I can see over time, you know, if my lifts are progressing or they're not progressing, um, if gym performance falls off a lot, especially in a cut, it's a bad sign. The best way to maintain muscle mass is going to be training hard and uh, making sure that you stay strong. And that's gonna kind of dictate your refeeds and stuff, right? 
So let's move on, we're gonna do a Terry's pull down. So the Terry's is this muscle right in your back right here. Let me show you guys, put my phone away. Right back in this area, okay? You got a lot of different stuff in here, but Terry's is up in this direction here. What we're gonna use here is this bar. Actually, we're gonna use this one. The wider, the better for a Terry's pull down. So if you think like of Arnold doing those really, really wide grip pull-ups, that's targeting the Terry's a lot. So that's what we're gonna be targeting here. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to pull my elbows right into my side. I can really feel that through there. All right, that's good for warm up. Whew. All right, time to take the pump cover off. Let's see what we're working with. That's the thing about bodybuilding is this is the funniest thing is you'll be prepping and in the moment you're like, I look so terrible. And then you'll take these pictures and videos and stuff. You come back after prep, you're shaking, he's shaking his head yes because he, he's done this before. And you'll come back and you look at the pictures and be like, what was I, what drugs was I on? Like, I looked fine. Like, what are you talking about? But you're also like, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete you're just completely delusional in the worst way possible when it comes to, you know, this, because you're, you just expect so much out of yourself, which is good, but you're always going to see yourself really badly. That's why even someone like me, who's a full-time coach, and I own my own business for it. I still have a coach because I would be way too emotional with myself. I could tell everything I just said to my clients, but with myself, I'm way too emotional. So let's get into it. Let's do this first top set here. That was a good set. Oh, Jason and I were also just talking about this. So I'm nine weeks out tomorrow, as I said in the beginning of this video, for my pro qualifier. And originally, I was gonna do a regional qualifier. So we're in Pittsburgh here. I live both in Pittsburgh and Florida. And up here in Pittsburgh, there's a really big show called the Mr. Pittsburgh. And I lost the overall in that in open bodybuilding uh, two years ago. And I wanted to go redeem myself in classic physique. That's what I do, I do classic physique. But I had to back my schedule up because I had a lot of roadblocks and things happened that were out of my control. And that's the thing you're gonna find in life, man. There's a lot of shit you can't control. You can control your effort, you can control your tendency, you can control how you react to those things that are happening to you. You cannot control a lot of what happens to you. And so I backed my timeline up and it was the best thing I ever did because now I'm nine weeks out and I'm in really good condition for nine weeks out but I was supposed to compete in two weeks and it kind of hurts to know that I'm not doing that. But when it comes to winning, I will do anything I have to do to win, okay? Because I've lost before several times. I've won my class a lot, but I've never won an overall. And I want to turn pro and I was three spots away from turning pro in 2022. The feeling of losing an overall, the feeling of, the feeling of, I, I hate talking about it, the, the feeling of losing an overall, the, the feeling of seeing other people get their pro cards in front of you, it's not a good feeling. It's, not, it's, it's something that I think about a lot. Especially on these days where I'm tired and you know, it's like, how can I get ahead of where I used to be? This is where I used to let myself cower a lot more and I wouldn't go as hard. I'd say, oh, I'm tired or oh, I don't feel good. You know, like who cares about your feelings? Just do what you have to do, okay? So last top set of these Terry's pull down. Let's get it. Oof. 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 Oof.
Oof. Oof. Oof. Oof. Oh, one more. Come on. Ah, oh, you got more. Oh, I got more than that. Let's come to him. Oof. Oh. All right. Back is done. But I'm going to take my shirt off and see what this looks like for a second. <laughs> Let's do some posing. Let me give you this. Oops, let me get the other pose. All right, I'm shocked guys, but we still got a lot of work in the out left to do. So we're gonna move on now. I'm gonna do um, hip height lateral raises, okay? So it's actually gonna start from my hips. Let me go show you guys that. Jason and I were talking about again, you know, the way this prep's going, like I'm going and my goal is to win my pro card at Universe, which I got top five in uh, my first national show. That was two years ago. And I didn't plan to do this show at the beginning of this prep. Like I thought I was gonna do Junior USA's, which is in a few weeks. But when I think about it, and I was able to reframe this to myself of, yeah, like I ran into some setbacks and stuff, but the fact of the matter is I can go back to this place where I didn't win and I can redeem myself there. That I love. I love redemption stories, man. And that's what I'm trying to create right now with every set I'm doing in here. So this is a lateral raise for your your delts obviously, but we're doing it at hip height, right? So this is a little lower than the hip height, but you'll see as I'm pulling through here, I'm trying to squeeze at the top. You'll notice with everything I'm doing, tempo is really big. I'm not flying through these movements. We're trying to put stress in the muscle. Good. So on that last set, like on this arm I just did, I was definitely feeling myself have my mind start drifting in the middle of that set to like, oh, I can't wait to eat when I'm done with my workout, whatever. You just gotta bring that focus back. Watch where your mind goes. Just watch where your mind goes. When you're training, it's a good practice in general for life, right? The mind will go all these different directions, but all kinds of crazy things, your mind will convince you of all this different stuff you gotta be able to control it, refocus yourself, feel it drifting, and that's what I'm really working on a lot when I'm training is, where is my mind going? In the middle of that set, is off in another direction, I, I brought it back, so I'm proud of myself for that. And it's, it's, it's something when you start paying attention to that and noticing that, you'll, you'll notice how much you do it. Because it's just when I'm training, when I'm training, I'm thinking about training. I'm not thinking about my business work, I'm not thinking about you know, creating content, I'm not thinking about anything other than just training. When I'm here, this is what I'm doing, right? And it reminds me actually of when I was first getting into the gym, right? Because before any of this stuff existed, when I was in high school, and all day when I was in school, I could not wait to get home. I was like, I'm getting home, I'm taking my mom's van, and I'm driving to the gym, and I'm working out. And the only thing I cared about when I was there was working out. The only thing I cared about the last two periods of school was getting home and, and training after that, right? So. I'm trying to bring that back into my life again because obviously as you get older, I'm 30 years old now, I have a lot more you know, responsibilities and, and things to do. But this, when I'm in here, this is my time. This is my time, this is my sanctuary. This is the thing that builds me for the rest of my life because life beyond that door right there is hard, guys. I have been through some immensely hard things 
in my business life, my personal life, with different bands I've been a part of, relationships. This is where you harden yourself mentally so that when you go out into the world and all those hard things happen to you, you're like, yeah, I can, I can handle it. I can handle it. Why? Because I know I push myself to my absolute limit in the gym. I can break myself down. If you can break yourself down, then anything externally is gonna be so much harder to bring you down. If you could do it to yourself and you can find that breaking point, you're gonna be so much better off, both in the micro of a workout like this, but also in the context of the rest of your life. Truly, you're gonna find that. How long can you go? Life's a marathon, bodybuilding prep's a marathon. It's 16 weeks, 20 weeks of how hard can you go every single day? Can't screw up, can't mess up. Imagine that for 20 weeks of your life, five months, if you've never done it before, it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do. But it's also the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. And with that, we're gonna hit biceps. Okay, that's I hope I get a pump in it. I got a good pump in my back. a lot of reps we're gonna have to go up and wait Definitely heavier. Come on, one more. One more. Come on. Now, it's a lot easier on these movements to cheat yourself and not train as hard as I did on those back movements. But that's how you have small arms, okay? And that's something I've struggled with <laughs> my whole life. But that's because I'm tall, I'm, almost, I'm like just shy of 6'3". But there's only one way to fill the arms out, guys, to train, train the living hell out of them. And if you're short, I envy you because, and only in that aspect though, because your arms will fill out a lot easier. I'll still take my height for everything else, I'll be honest. Jason's laughing. How tall are you? I'm 5'5", five, 5'7". Five, five, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Oh, the funny thing was, it's like the best bodybuilding angles are low to up. Yeah. For me, I'm literally just shooting at like straight on, yeah. Straight on. <laughs> 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 it's true though. No, but for me, legs, like I actually downsized my legs. Because I saw because of that reason. Yeah, that's almost like in some ways for back. Like my back overpowers my back and my chest and my physique overpower a lot of stuff. It's just more that now my training, like my split now is I have a leg day Monday, I have a full upper body day Tuesday, Wednesday I'm off, Thursday is another leg day, Friday today is a pull day, tomorrow is a push day. And there's just a lot of volume allocated to arms and stuff at that point. <clears throat> Tricep movement, I'm doing single arm push downs. If you notice, a lot of the stuff I'm doing is unilateral and I really like that because I'm able to focus specifically, like right now I'm gonna focus on this tricep. Only thing that matters right now is this tricep, right? So if you notice here, I'm still doing a warm-up set, but I'm really letting this stretch. Like this is really stretching my bicep out. 
it's very important, the contraction, yes, but that stretch pos position is super important for building muscle. Whether you're training biceps, back, legs, it doesn't matter. All right, last set of upper body here. Last set mentality right here. This is where it's very easy to let your mind fade. <clears throat> All right, guys, that's it. That's going to wrap this up. I hope you have enjoyed getting some, you know, mental tips as well as actual training things for building your back. Um, I'm gonna go pose a little bit right now and uh, maybe we'll, we'll grab some pictures, but make sure you guys like the video, make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna be doing a lot of this, documenting everything up until I'm competing. So come be a part of the journey. Thanks for being a part of this video. I'll see you in the next one.